And you're very welcome to a Wazobia Max TV special. Today, we're going to be having a fusion of an interview done in English language and Pidgin language, the very first of its kind here on our show. We, we know that you're going to be having an absolutely amazing time. Now, our guest today is someone who has been in the policy, running things from behind the scenes as well as in front of the scenes. He was appointed commissioner for the minister for uh, commissioner for the Ministry of Science and Technology at some point, and was also appointed the commissioner for the Works and Infrastructure. Now today he's running as um, he's running under the APC as a deputy governorship candidate for the All Progressives Congress, and he's here to join us to share with us his dreams for Lagos, his dreams for Nigeria, and we get to know him a little more personally. So joining us today is Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamza. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. All right, so maybe we, we should um, ask you, first of all, we're very excited. Chukudi and I are going to be having this conversation. I'm going to be having in English, and of course, Chukudi will be having in Pidgin. So sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. I'm sure we should start off first with your interest in politics, how you got into the scene. What ticked your interest at first, from the very beginning? Well, you know that as children, we all, you know, follow the footsteps of our parents. So my father is a politician. Uh, my father was a commissioner in this state during the Jack on the administration. As a matter of fact, he was the first commissioner for public transportation. So it was during his time that they wanted to build the metro line that was canceled by the military there. So if you come to my father's house today, the model is still there. And you know when they go for meetings, their political meeting and everything, he will record it. You know, radio at that time, he will record it. In the, you know those tape cassettes, we record it and make me to write it. And, you know, so I will write the minutes at home. So because of his involvement in politics all the time, so it's, I think it's a bit natural that you follow the footsteps of your parents most of the time. And that's why as parents, of course, we must try and do the right things. So from very little child, I've been introduced into politics. Now, another very important question when I go ask and I say, uh, as Nigerians, they like this, now 2019, now in the everybody mind. Yes. And now 2019, everybody they think about. She don't talk about your experience, especially when you don't serve for inside government. Mm. But a lot of Nigerians go say, now politicians spoil Nigeria. Mm. If we get people when they're there for government, but it be like say, we look at our life, we don't see any improvement. Now only politicians, then they're fresh, or those when they government and their family members. This is your experience when you get, mm. how you take things, say, uh, for the position where you go occupy as deputy governor uh, for the APC, if the government win for 2019, mm. it go help the life of the average Lagos resident. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the thing be say, if you look back, Nigeria was a great country. If you look back, let me tell you this. This television, this television, United Kingdom, has it in 1957. Nigeria has it in 1959. We had television before France and before Belgium. True. So we were a gay country. What happened? We had a coup. So if to, if to say we did progress like that politically, Nigeria would have been great. But we were, we were short circuited. And that is, we are still feeling the effect of today. So people, we must understand it. Nothing say we know if we make mistakes. If we make mistakes. But we, we make mistakes, we must learn from it and move on. So who we'll say America, they know they make mistakes, they make mistakes, but they correct them and move on. So to say that politicians, it's all of us. Look, these politicians, are they not Nigerians? Are they Ghanaians? They be Nigerians. Uh, they be Nigerians. So you, you be Nigerian. Everybody will be Nigerian. The man that they drive down for and they cross one way, he, be, he come from Ghana. They're Nigerian. They're Nigerian. So now all of us will come together and determine, say, how we want this country to be. That is why you must ask questions, the people that you want to rule you. So if you see somebody and say, ah, ah, money co plenty, and so on, if that's your something, okay, vote for him. But if you want Nigeria to be good, you must ask questions. You say you won't do this, how you go pay for them? You say you won't do this, how you go pay for them? So you must ask, so, and that's why the experience that me and Mr. Jiri Sonwoldu has, that's why it's useful. We've worked in private sector, we work in public sector. Look, if I won't feed people for this, for this house where we they sit, right, I must know where the kitchen day. Even say I'll be good cook, but I must know where the rice be. So if I can't find the rice, I will, because some people will hide the rice. So I must know, say, the rice day inside here. And that is the experience that Mr. Sonwolu and myself will bring to the table. So that we know from day one what we want to cook, how we want to cook it. Now, many people have 
condemn strongly the fact that lots of politicians, I will bring the conversation back again to politicians, even though we know that the everyday Nigerian citizens also have a role to play in making Nigeria great again. But let's look at our leaders. We've talked about corruption. Corruption has become a plague that's eaten deeply into the fabrics of our society. Absolutely. What is the way out? How do we get out of this? Recently, we had the Court of Appeal in Abuja stating that um, failure of government officers, or governors rather, to declare security votes is an act akin to genocide. But we've seen that happen several times over and over again. And it does seem that we're running a system where everybody feels free to do whatever they want to do mm. without recourse to what the, what the punishment whatsoever mm. will be. How do we get rid of corruption, starting first from amongst our politicians? Mm. Well, I think, uh, like, I, my own belief basically is that, you know, what separates us as a country from the so-called developed country is technology and the rule of law. You know, we have laws. We must all obey that law. So the reality today is that we have enough laws to prosecute people. We must do it. And, you know, in fairness to the current government, that's what they are trying to do. But like people say, corruption was, was fired by. Now, the Court of Appeal gave that judgment, whatever. Remember that even this government one time wanted to go and arrest judges because of so-called resolve of corruption. So the reality is that because it is deep, it is ingrained, it's going to take time. But, you know, corruption is just not stealing money also. So, for example, you go to a hospital and a woman is pregnant, crying, and a nurse is sitting there not attending. That's corruption because that woman can die. But you are paid to do this. So it's widespread in our society, but we must, as a people, come together and say, no, is enough is enough. Let us see how we... Because, look, if we build the society that we, we all enjoy it, we, it, will, it will be better for us, it will be better for my children, it will be better for our children. So we must come together. But like you said, politicians must lead and say, these are the things, and live by that example. So that even when you are driving, a governor should not drive against traffic. You can't say because you're a governor, you drive against traffic. It's against the law, it's against the law. And so the, we must en en enforce our laws. So like I said, technology, rule of law. But you also realize again, that that rule of law is a subset of technology. Because in today's world, who, who goes around following traffic all over the place? The camera will take your picture, they will send you the bill, and you pay your bill at home. So congestion charges in London, for example, is because as you drive in, some camera takes your picture. So you realize that they enforce their law using technology. And that's what we must do here. But we must enforce our laws. That's the only way you reward good behavior and you punish bad behavior. Now, the reason why would they get striker and supporting striker and I say two of them must work together. Mm. Now, we don't see, say, uh, the person when they wear the jersey to be governor for APC, now, Ogasson Olu, you they wear a supporting striker mm. for APC too. But people don't look the history of Lagos. They don't see, say, it'd be like, say, any time where man they play supporting striker or deputy, uh, Wahala they day, it'd be like, say, they stubborn. Now, if we check, <laughs> we see uh, Mama Bokno, Koforola Akerele, we see Ogafemi Pedro, the conduct said the reason why they get women back to back now so that people like say women that they behave themselves, they don't they behave anyhow. Some people don't look you, can't see, say you not person when we say your eye don't open. You don't see plenty <laughs> things inside politics. Say it be like say you get one quarter when they wait for the future, when go come. Mm -hmm. How you take things, say your relationship with your guys, so we'll based on man and man, based on two people when get plenty experience, and based on person when we say what you never see for inside politics. You don't think say you get one small quarter, we go soon come. No, 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 no. The, uh, the question be say, what do we won't go there do? You know, if we are going there to serve people, the job is big. To solve problem for any society is big. Lagos, transportation problem, waste problem, water problem, is big. So, it, it, uh, look, we go get commissioner, they go do work. So me and Mr. Sondo, we don't know ourselves for over 15 years. I know the family. We've been friends. We know each other. We met on the job, and we, we like the way we work together. So I'm, I'm sure that's what the parties them, but that's what they saw. I say, ah, the two of you, OK, you don't become, you go and be. So it's because the way we they work together as people. I know it because of, say, the need to get advantage over, because you collect from. Say mm -hmm. you won't become governor. Yes. yes. But it be like say some people talk, say they can't discuss for background. Mm -hmm. Can't decide, say if you talk, say you know go be governor again, mm -hmm. they go peer you. Mm -hmm. So that two of them are going to be strong force against 
the seven governor. Uh, not be that thing, cause that arrangement. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, say that I contested against the current governor in 2014. Mm -hmm. That is politics. Okay. Uh -huh. And but po all politics are also local. True. Uh -huh. So you know, say we get different communities for Lagos. Mm -hmm. We get senatorial district east. We get west. We get central. Okay. Now, me and Mr. Ambody, we, my mother is from East. So, the, you must balance it. So, all those balancing we must, within the party, they must also say, ah, no, you, we must refer to the other So, people. that everybody go there represented. Everybody go there represented. Mm -hmm. So, these are some of the things that they consider. Okay. You understand? Now, so, now, okay, sorry. Talking about representation, yes. we could look some of the problems when we say negotiations they face. I get surprised when I go rent house for somewhere. Mm -hmm. They can't tell me, say, uh, what are they come from Lagos State government. But for the past, like I say, for the past, now I lack my side, for the past uh, two months now, the water been come like three times, you know, come again. We know they see that water issue. Mm -hmm. Some people, they argue, say, like I say, Lagos, they get Lagos for the big man and Lagos for the poor man. Mm -hmm. And people don't look this administration, see, say, like I say, the connection no day between the government and also the people when we say the governor. Uh, they in charge of. Some mm -hmm. people don't even complain, say we don't even count like under Babatunde Raji Fashola or even uh, the Ashiwa Jibola Metinubu. We they count commissioners because we they hear them, then they talk, we they see them, then they address problems and then they proffer solutions to these problems. Mm -hmm. But under this particular administration, some people say they go call commissioner, commissioner go say no fee talk, or he no one talk, or he never, he time never reach for them to talk. Say we go get government when we say the people go fee beat their chest. Say this government really understand our problems. Like for those when they stay at Lakmere now, we don't tell me, say, water no day, oh, they don't understand. Meanwhile, they don't pay water rates. She will go get government, we go there very close to the people and address the problems when we say the people they face. Well, uh, during that fashion that government that you talk about, I'm a commissioner there. Mm. I was commissioner for that eight years. We they read your name for paper, but now so we're not they read any other version. We, uh, we, we publish, we put our phone for, 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 telev for television. For newspaper. newspaper, everybody they call us. I'm not in government now, mm. so the thing will change. I don't know. But we will they feel like we they tell you. Uh, yes, mm. so I know. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So what the the promise we are going to make here? We say we go go back to that system, where people will know us, we will know them. We've said that we go run an inclusive government. We must listen to the people. Look, the the problem plenty. We will not solve all of them one day. So we must talk to the people in Alakpere, in Akowonjo, that what do you want, what is your priority? So, you know, maybe in our water. So if we are building roads there, you know, so in terms of, we must also prioritize and say what thing you want. So we must talk to people. We, in that case, I can promise you that we, we will not be found wanting because we don't want to talk to people. We will. Okay. Now, can we solve all the problem in one day? I don't know if you lie to you. I don't know how to lie. So we, but we will attempt and do our best to make sure all these problems will, will solve out. Still speaking at, about Lagos State, we know that Lagos State is the commercial capital of Nigeria. It might not be where it ought to be, but Lagos State has done a good job. For, it's, Lagos State is one of the states that we know that doesn't owe their worker salaries, you know, like some other states do. Mm. But there are still several other issues that we need to tackle in Lagos State. We still have issues of power, we still have issues of traffic, you know, our roads still need to be sorted. So the question I want to ask you is this. You've said we should ask our politicians questions and we should vote into power people that already give us a laid out plan of what they want to do. Absolutely. If there was one major problem in Lagos State you had to tackle first, what would that problem be and how do you intend to go about it? Well, it is more than one. So uh, it's hypothetical, so I would say, but you know, the biggest problem for people moving around is traffic. Now, traffic is transportation, so it's, it's big. It's not just a road. So we must fix our roads. Now, by the time we were leaving the administration, we have asphalt plant. You know, asphalt is what we use to build the roads. So what we decided to do is we have what we call the public works department, right? Lagos State Public Works. They have one asphalt plant, but before we realized that, you know, asphalt plant, when, asphalt, when you carry it long distance, it can cake. It becomes solid and you can't use it. So we decentralized Lagos. We built one in Emota, which is Ikorodi East Side. The one in Ikeja is there, and we built another one in Badagri. We will make sure that they work efficiently. So that, and then you create jobs. So because what we do is we have these gangs that move around at night to, to fix roads. So that by the time you wake up, it is, so we must fix our roads. And then there are 41 traffic gridlocks in Lagos where 
conflicts exist, and then we've identified them, we will resolve them as much as we can. So, so that traffic can flow, people can leave their house and be able to plan it. Now, we are, we are a nation or a people that loves car. But, uh, so, so Lagos has about 2.2 million cars. That's a lot of cars. And remember, in terms of size, we occupy only less than 2% in terms of land mass of Nigeria. So if we're in Niger state, Niger is 7.9% of the land mass of Nigeria. It's bigger than the whole of Southeast. So it is easier. So certain things must change in this way we actually run our transportation. And that's why our rail system is important. From, we are building now from Orile all the way to Marina. We will make sure we complete that. So that we will try to, and see how we can enhance water transportation. We must give people options and sure. then make sure that our BRT gets better so that people can park and then ride. But in order to do all this, we must grow the basket. Because, you know, like I said, you, you must ask questions. How do you want to fund this? It is important because all these things cost a lot of money. So the way to do that is to open up the market so that we build technology so that our br bright guys today in Lagos are over 500 startups. We can export these things. So when you, I used to work for Mary Lynch, and as a vice president in Mary Lynch, I headed a team of 80 people. And one day, my, my overall president called me and said, listen, Kadri, I need you to give me a list of 71 people that we need to get rid of. And I said, you must be nuts. You are crazy. What do you mean? He said, because the minimum staff that we pay your department gets $280,000. Now, the office space in Manhattan, our, our office is on 5th Avenue. It's, uh, it's this cost. We pay this. We pay 401k. So everything turns to about 200000 But I can go to India, give somebody 15000 to do that job. So we are running a business. So, and I asked at the time, can I take that to Nigeria? They said no. Why? At that time, that's when we were having the Yahoo Yahoo boys, and then two were having power problems. But today, it's getting better. So if we build innovation center, incubation centers, we can bring that home. So that companies like that, that when you at and when you call for help, it's not in America. Somebody has to ask you, answer you from India or Ireland. Why not Lagos? So those are the things that we can bring up. But we need help also with the federal government. So we are lucky today that we have people that at least listen to us at the federal government. Remember, I was commissioner for works in Lagos. That plays at I like better where people park today. I wanted to use it, but I didn't have, because that used to be the office of the director and controller of works in Lagos. But I couldn't get it. But the moment this minister gets there, today he said, Lagos, you need to go and use it. So we have that cooperation today, and we'll be able to work and make sure that at least we're able to resolve some of this. We're hoping that you leverage on that at the end of the day. If you do get into office and if you do win, we hope yeah. to see a better Lagos and a better Nigeria at large. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We can't let you go without getting to know you on a different, of, you know, on a different level. So when you're not running for office, when you're not campaigning, what are you doing? Well, uh, I'm, I'm a family person, so I stay home a lot. And, you know, I cherish my family a whole lot, also because of my own circumstances. I got married when I was 28, and uh, I didn't have a child for 12 years. So... So it took me time. So it, it seems I appreciate them a little bit more, well, I think, because it took me time to have them. So I'm a family person. I stay a lot with my, my family and, uh, and, and friends. I don't have too many friends, but the little one that I have, I cherish them a lot. I keep my friends uh, for a long time. Like the Americans will say, I can go outside in the snow to save a friend but I don't have many friends like that, but because I'm, I'm also a family person. Now, people, they talk, say family is everything, we understand. Mm. If you check the way we Nigeria day, we get plenty of people, when we say they'll be 35 years and below, past every other people. But a lot of these young people, what in their mind now, make I make money, make I day okay, make I day all right. It just be like, say, everybody, they think about themselves and not about the other people. What in you go advise or encourage young people to think about, you know, the next man, any lakeji for Yoruba, mm. you know, especially <laughs> when be like you, so that we go fit through in our true Nigerian nature, mm. help each other, you know, and rise by lifting each other. You know, government must work better. We have to work better with churches and mosques. Let me give you the statistics. Lagos have 
primary schools and secondary schools, about 1,800 of it. The number of churches and mosques is about three, four times that. So we have a whole lot that, so we need to work with our pastors, our, our mosques, our imams, so that they can help us talk to our kids that all that glitter is not good. That's a statement that has been said years back. It's not me or it's not them that is saying it. And it's important that your life is not, nobody remembers you because you spend money to buy a shoe. People remember you because of what you do for others. And, that, and those are the engagement that we have with our children in school. Uh, you know, we must have academy. When we were all young, we have uh, Boy Scout, we have Girl Scout. All those seems to have gone. We need to bring it back so that people have a sense of community. That it's not just me. And that's the essence of all. So we start all these associations again in school and people. And, you know, we are also thinking of even building communities so that our children, when they, feel, they can come back and read in school. During, so that, that's why we thought of solar power. And so there are so many initiatives that we are thinking of, but the family is the most important. And we must also understand that that person on the street can be my brother. That person on the street can be my cousin. As I'm sitting there, I don't know where my son is. So it can be anywhere. So it is in, in my own interest to make sure that everywhere is okay, it's okay True. because I don't know where it's going to be. You know, I have sisters that are serving in Kaduna State. So there can be problems. So we must understand that it now takes a whole village in the real sense to actually live together. Very true. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank now, you, you mentioned that you run an inclusive government. So if people wanted to contact you to ask questions, we're not asking for your phone numbers, but are you active on social media? If people wanted to interact with you, how can they do that? Well, I'm active on social media. You know, my Twitter handle is there, Instagram, okay. Facebook. And, you know, I think my Facebook, I've been running it for years and inspirational. I've, I've been running What's your Facebook page? It's, uh, it's Obafemi Hamzat. Okay. So based, everything is about Femi Hamza. I said my Twitter that's just Femi Hamza, and I'm going to change it back to about Femi Hamza. Brilliant. So that it's the same thing. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank so you of course, very much for you can me. communicate with him and ask all the necessary questions you would like to ask. And of course, he's mentioned that he'd be willing to answer all the questions that you have. We've been speaking with the APC Deputy Governorship Candidate for Lagos State, Dr. Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat, and we've had such a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much, Chukudi, for joining us on this conversation. Thank you very much. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.